Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Fantasy Pug Quest. Fantasy Pug Quest is a game, well, actually I'll read the back because it's fun. It's a cooperative game for one to five players where brave pugs will fight against evil, fearsome, and sometimes fluffy villains to free their worlds. In the game, you're going to be choosing among the different classes, such as, of course, thieves, or perhaps warriors, or even bards, and each of them are going to have their own unique card system in which you'll be able to utilize to fight against monsters. It's a game that has tactics built in it because you're going to be moving around a grid attacking monsters in the different columns, but because the monsters move different ways, you're going to need to utilize that space and try and maneuver your, yourself into the position of monsters to fight them. Throughout each of the worlds, it's going to be a bit more difficult, and there's going to be a boss monster in the game that you're going to fight. The game's quick, like I said, 30 to 45 minutes to play, but it has some depth to it, as well as an interesting aspect of cards in which you'll be drawing or choosing from a uh, stack of them on the playing field. If you can defeat all the monsters, and that evil villain, you're gonna win the game. If you cannot, your poor cute puppy will be destroyed and you'll ultimately have to try again. All right, let's go take a look. So here we have Fantasy Pug Quest and everything included. As you can see, you have the rule book here. And of course, the box this is all prototype, which is, as you can see, it's, it's got a paper board here. But you're going to be getting tokens. These are damage tokens. You've got these ability tokens here, which you utilize throughout the game, as well as choosing between one of the five different characters or a five player game, choosing all of them. Each of these cards here are your reference cards that show you the different abilities you have. And they all have different abilities and the different costs to all of them. And these are all the bosses in the game. All the bosses have their own unique cards, as well as, of course, their own unique artwork and health and all that good stuff that shows you how they function. You're going to get three other separate, or four other separate cards, uh, card decks, and this one here is going to be items. You can gather these items when you defeat monsters. These are the different worlds in which it'll tell you where monsters are going to spawn when you fight them. And these over here are monsters, whether it be a slimy, watery piece of poo or fighting against Schnauzer bombers or Corey, Corgi griffins, mimic dog houses and owl rats, so on and so forth. This is your power deck of cards, which you're going to start a handful of these, as well as being able to choose these on your turn either from here or from the deck. It's going to have the different colors along with a choice of a wild. All in all, this is all you're going to get in the game along with this board that shows you the different tactical layouts of the game, the different worlds that are going to be progressing through, and your time limit to win the game. If you don't in that time limit, you're going to lose. Let's go ahead and talk about how a turn works and the basic setup. So to begin the game, you're simply going to choose a hero along with its card. You're also going to draw cards from the deck, the main deck, that are basically these different colors here. Based on the number of players in a two-player game, it's nine cards, but it changes depending on how many players you play. You can play one up to, up to, up to five players. After you do that, you're going to go ahead and set your heroes down on the board somewhere, and you're going to go ahead and take one of the world cards from the world deck, flip it over, read what it says, and do it if you have to, or you see whatever it says this effect is, and then place that on the board the monsters based on where it tells you to place them. It's pretty simple, right? After that, you're ready to begin, and you're going to get to do actions on your turn. It's going to be based off of... Uh initiative and your initiative value will tell you on each of your cards along with the monsters so if you're 14 and a monster is 13 your next friend is 12 it'll go in that specific order on your turn you're going to take two actions and you can do stuff like attack you can draw cards from the deck and you can move you can perform these actions uh, as many times uh, both you can perform them uh, all of them um, twice if you'd like except for attack you can only perform once and then after that you can go ahead and utilize the combo card and use any of the cards in your hand to perform combos these things are going to be the most doing doing the most amount of damage to the monsters on the row across from you, and that's how you're going to utilize those cards. After you cannot no longer take any more actions or bonus actions, which are the free combo actions, then it's going to pass to the next person in initiative. After everybody has taken their initiative actions, as well as free actions, the game is going to go to the next turn, and you're going to continue. Now, the way it works is there's three different worlds, and as you defeat monsters in each of the worlds, the tracker is going to progress to the next world marker, showing a new world and increasing the amount of monsters that are in play. At the third world, you're actually going to get those monsters along with a potential boss monster that you'll select at that point in time randomly, and it could be something like this Badger of the Seven Seas, or a Vacuum Cleaner, or some kind of evil kitty. Who knows what it's going to be? You'll have to fight that along with the rest of the monsters. If the timer hits 10 before you defeat everything, you're going to lose. However, you can defeat all, all three worlds. Before the timer is over, you're going to win the game. You and your allies will be in happy puppy heaven. So, that's how you play the game. Let me go ahead and show you a couple turns. So, we went ahead and set it up for two players. So, every single uh, everything is out for two players 
that you need right now. You got your hand of cards here. Each player has their uh, reference to, to, uh, token here. And then, of course, you've got your heroes that were placed here. This is the front line area, and this is the back line area. Uh, we also flipped over the first world, which is the Enchanted Grove, and it tells you where to place down the units. It has one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and it'll tell you one player, two player, three, four, and five. However many players are on the game is how many units you will add to this area, making it more challenging with more players. After you go ahead and put the units down from this little deck here, you're going to go ahead and set down a final boss hidden uh, over here, or you can do it on the third world. It's up to you. To heal out five of these cards here from this deck and begin with the person who has the highest initiative. Initiative based on the top right-hand corner here. And of course, it's going to go down to health and then movement and their specific abilities. This character gets additional cards to start the round, and this character over here can move an additional time, provided he moves behind somebody else. So he's especially, specifically more useful with a larger player game. After that's ready to go, you will simply play the game. All right, so the first place from highest initiative is going to go, which is going to be the thief here. Unfortunately, he can't use a special ability because he's already behind somebody, but he can choose to move. Whenever you choose to move, make sure you go into the front if you can, and then that will be one action. Another action he could choose to do would probably be to draw cards. He'll draw this card here, and then this is going to get replaced by this one here. Also, remember to check with your thief what of the different colors you're going to need. This guy specifically is going to be using yellow and blue, and then he can uh, use additional ones for red and yellow. They, they're going to increase in value as you defeat monsters. You'll get levels up, and you'll be able to use better abilities. You go ahead and check your hand of cards to see what you've got in there. He's got a good amount of yellow. Maybe he'll go for a blue card. And then after that, that will be his actions. He can then choose to use bonus actions if he would like. He has the ability to uh, attack these guys here, and it's going to be based on your ability as to what you can do. There's a ra there's ranged attacks, and of course there's melee attacks, and other specific attacks you can do. And it'll tell you, like a sneak attack, inflicted damage, um, a plus a damage if you are behind another hero. So if he just chose to discard a blue and a yellow, that would simply do one damage. Uh, this one over here is an uncanny dodge, completely negate an attack if he had this. So whenever these guys do their thing, I can simply utilize my cards to stop attacks from happening. And then pickpocket to target a monster. Target monster is now considered robbed and will drop treasures when defeated. Um, oh, sorry. Target monster is now considered robbed and will not drop treasures when uh, defeated, nor can it be negated by this combo again, but you get to draw a treasure card. Oh, and uh, and draw an extra one of these things. So that's pretty sweet, so maybe we'll do that one there. So we would utilize this card here, and this one here, and of course a yellow one, and then we can go ahead and pickpocket this guy here, which will give us a treasure. That's pretty useful. He can't be, uh, no treasure can drop from him though, which is okay. You get to draw an extra one of these cards, so it only costs you two cards as opposed to three. It didn't do any damage to him though, however, but we need to start doing that. Uh, he's not going to, maybe he will, he'll do one more action. He'll go ahead and use another blue, and he'll use another yellow, and that's going to let him do some damage at least. He's not behind somebody, so he won't do bonus damage, but he at least will hit this guy for one damage, so that's pretty cool. After that, he can choose to be done, and the next player will get to go. This player could choose to move, and maybe he will do that. Maybe he'll move right here, and then uh, he may choose to also draw. He needs to get purple and uh, yellow, so maybe he'll take these ones here and flip these over. He might be best to choose first before, and then let it refresh before choosing another one. Uh, but but this guy has some pretty far, pretty powerful abilities. He can do for two purples, and hopefully he has a red. He does. He can inflict two damage, and then inflict one damage to each monster adjacent to that target. So he could do that, which would hit this guy for two damage, and then it would hit uh, one damage for each adjacent monster, so that's pretty useful there. Um, and then he could be done as well. He could continue to use these abilities if he wants to, or if he could. When, oops, sorry, these are, these are ones though. When these guys drop, they're going to fall over and die. Now, in general, they're going to drop a treasure, so a player will get a treasure. They'll say this is a victory token, because as you gain more of these, you'll level up throughout the game, and it'll tell you in the rules how you how many you need in order to level up to level 2 and level 3, which give you stronger abilities. Uh, but remember also, too, that this guy... Um, uh, no, sorry, it wouldn't be this guy. It'd be this guy would actually go in turn order next before the wizard. I forgot. This is the initiative order. So he would actually go first. So he'd actually, he's going to move up based on this. It says move up one. And it inflicts damage based on these two arrows, which means it attacks this area and this area for one. And uh, if... Uh, adjacent to another monster, it would do another damage. So then the Chihuahua would actually move, so we would go here. So maybe this guy actually wouldn't have moved on his turn. Instead, he would probably would have just drawn two um, additional cards from the top of the deck here. Uh, so he didn't move, in fact. Uh, but then this guy is going to inflict one damage, two if uh, red or yellow are revealed. Yeah, it is not. So he's just simply going to do uh, one damage to him. And uh, then, so then it, would, then it would be his turn, because he would be at 14, this was at 16. Then he would go ahead and kill this guy, taking it, gaining it. And finally, after that, the Owl Rat would take its turn. He would move down, he would inflict two damage and force the target to change position. So two damage, one 
and two, and then it forces them to go down. When we go down, you just simply go up to the top here. And uh, of course, after that, uh, this is actually going to move because everybody has taken their turns and then it would continue like that. Your objective, of course, is to defeat all the monsters here. And when you do that, you're going to gain treasures. You're going to also advance the world tracker and uh, treasures are going to pop up and you'll be able to utilize them by trading for them or buying for them based on this symbol over here. Also, in any of these, uh, in the odd rounds of the game, if you don't pay one of these, you're going to suffer some kind of penalty, so you have to make sure you remember to do that. And also, when you defeat all the monsters, a new world is going to pop up. You're going to refill the area once again, so we have a one and a one here. Let's see what we get. We get a pug zombie, we get a chihuahua, and then we get a... Ooh, what's this one? A Mimic Doghouse? And finally, this one over here is going to be another Pug Skeleton. And once again, we're going to start fighting. If your character passes away uh, during, a ra during a world, you're actually going to be out for that entire world, which means you don't get to come back. And that will likely increase the timer because it'll take these guys longer to defeat them. If all your characters die, you're going to lose. As well as as this moves on, if it hits 10 before you defeat all three worlds, then the game is going to end. The final world, if you get to it, is going to spawn a boss. And the B over here is for boss. Uh, and you're going to utilize the uh, the space that it tells you to, to put it in and put that guy there. He'll also have his own unique abilities and whatnot and his own unique health as well as movement. So you're going to be trying to beat this guy. If you can defeat him, you're going to win the game. And also don't forget that each of these uh, locations here have specific abilities on them. Heroes can't draw cards during even rounds, so you, you can't utilize that. That's pretty bad. Um, and of course, don't forget about these things. Some of these are going to be equipments that you can utilize throughout the game, like you can actually use a bow that's going to let you have specific additional abilities, or you're going to actually get stuff like this. Um, oh, not this one. This one, Cupcake, which will allow you to discard this treasure to draw a card up to your maximum hand size and or move to any position or pizza. Then you have a cute coat, all these cool little items and whatnot. It's a very simple game, and it's actually very quick because the rounds go by pretty quick. I already showed you just one simple round as to how it works. More players make it, it takes a little bit longer, but there's a ton of also different bosses in the game that you can select. These are all the different extra warriors, but then you've got all these extra bosses, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so that's the basic idea of how to play Fantasy Pug Quest. Moving around the board, utilizing your special abilities, defeating the monsters as they move around the board. Make sure you're consistent too. Don't don't change the way they're facing or whatnot. So then it will be things all messed up. And also realize where they're attacking. But that's how you do it. All right, let's talk about it. So just before I get into talking about the game, one little thing. When I robbed that guy, what would signify that he was robbed? How would I know not to take a treasure from him when I defeat him? Well, there's little uh, tokens that you're going to be using on the, in the game that will have your color associated to them, and you'll put a token on that monster signifying the ability. That way you know that you don't take it from himself, just in case you need to know that. I think it's pretty important, though, and a very nice, useful addition. So what do I think about the game Fantasy Pug Quest? Well, first of all, artwork. Excellent. This game is super cute. I, I love the fact that this the artwork in here is all about the little cute doggies, but they're all like evil or have their own unique, you know, Chihuahua Hydras or, and like mimic dog houses. All the different monsters. I, I went through them over and over again just checking out the cuteness. My wife was enthralled with the different artworks. The Corgi Griffin. Oh, so cute. The, the Dutch's Hydra. <laughs> uh, the Pug Zombies Psy Pincher. But I have a little pincher myself, so I like that. <laughs> He's kind of crazy with his brain, though. All the different doggy fighters too are super cute. Uh, the game is a tactical game, but it has a little bit of that ticket to ride feel where you're going to be selecting the different colors you need to utilize the different mechanics, uh, the different combos, and of course leveling up as you fight monsters. It's quick and it's fun. This game can work really well with kids in fact, and you can increase the difficulty and decrease the difficulty by adding extra monsters if you would like. By simply playing a two player game with three players you can do that. And I think in the rules it actually has some differentiation on how to increase the difficulty if needed. However, the game was very very close when we were playing it. And and um, for two players and three players, it actually almost, we almost lost because it was super close. I think we're on like eight or nine by the time we're fighting the bosses. And each of the bosses are not the same. Some of them are more difficult than others, and they all have their own unique abilities. The Rat King here says when this boss is revealed, deploy face down boss cards equal to the number of heroes plus one instead of the regular monsters as shown. Um, as well as the rat, you, have, you put rats down basically, and they all have their own specific abilities on there. And whenever this boss is attacked, the nearest rat becomes the target of the attack instead. So he's a little bit of a challenge to defeat. Um, the items are cool. I want to see more items. I'm sure this is a prototype and it only has certain things in it. So I hope to see even more items than what is here. We went through most of them for the two games we played, uh, and I'd like to. Uh, uh, hopefully there's gonna be more. I like the equipments. I think the equipments are cool. Some of them are better used for different characters than others. So I'm making sure who gets them and whatnot. You can 
you actually trade during the world phases and of course you can get rid of them to get new ones you're also able to utilize the world spaces that will let you buy them and whatnot with the different item costs all the different worlds have a nice and interesting aspect to them that changes the game in some way want to see more world spaces as well i'm kind of assuming that all my only critiques in this game are things that i just want to see more of it and i assume they're just all going to be on the Kickstarter campaign, so I'm not going to give it that negative critique because you'll see on the campaign in the description below if it has uh, more than what was shown here. And I imagine, I really do imagine it will because it's not too hard to do that. Uh, but overall, the game's are solid. The theme of the game is really cool. It, it's cute. It's fun. It's very easy to learn, very easy to play, and it's something that doesn't take too long to go through. I have played this game multiple times, and I definitely suggest playing it again. Uh, if you've got a family of uh, kids, then this is also another game that be fun to play it does have a little bit of like blood and guts but it's kind of like cartoony in a way almost like car exploding kittens style overall though fantasy plug fuck <laughs> fantasy pug quest is a really fun game i think you will enjoy it if you like the style of artwork and you enjoy tactics games do give it a look and let me know in the comments below fantasy pug quest decide for yourself if you're interested in taking a look at the campaign and backing all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter board game review if you like this video go and check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment and all this help would be greatly appreciated as well as checking out fantasy pug quest it reminds me of fantasy football for some reason it's not really like that but i guess it has some tactical football strategies i suppose overall though super fun super cute also check out our website unfilteredgamer.com we have tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more we're currently giving away two games right now one of them is fires of eidolon and the other one is i can't remember because my memory is terrible all right guys that's all i got for you this time as always i look forward to playing some fantasy pugs with you next time